In this video, we will look at the use of variable dates. In particular, you can use a variable date to apply shading against, for example, today or the current progress period, and it will always move depending on what that date is. To give you an example, I'm going to now put some shading onto my bar chart via the Format tab here, and then go to Shading. When I click Add, I can set this shading to any date I like. So, for example, I could set a static date of 6th of March, and if I want it to go on for, let's say, a week, I can go finish 13th of March and click Apply. That's a static shading. It's never going to move. However, what I actually want is to put some shading that is going to shade the two-week period after whatever my progress entry period is. So what I can do is, in this date drop-down here, I can click Select a Variable Date at the bottom. You'll see there's a few different options. And the one we want is Current Progress Period Date. I'm going to do the exact same thing for my finish date, except now, at the end of the, uh, the wording here, I'm going to leave a space and type in plus 2w for plus 2 weeks, and then click Apply. At the moment, my current progress period is the black line at the start of my project. But if I move towards my week 1 period here, and set that as my progress entry period, the shading moves with it, and that will continue throughout the entire program. It's worth noting that variable shading can also be used in a variety of other manners. And as an example, if I go into my grids, there's a few different grid lines already here to show the day, the week, and so on. But if I add a new grid, I can set this time unit to variable date. I can then set the variable date either to a specific day, or I could have a grid line on today's date. Let's make this slightly bigger maybe change the pattern to a dotted line and then when I click apply you can see we've got this black dotted line going down my program and when I log in tomorrow or the next day and so on that will of course move to whatever the day is. The last example that I will show although there are of course a few other options that you can use variable dates is filters because a good example of this might be that if I wanted to filter for a date range that had a variable date such as today plus six weeks when you create your filter and you edit the criteria, the time slice date range option here on the last panel will ask you when you want the time slice to start and finish. And we're just going to do exactly the same thing as we did when we set our yellow shading to be two weeks after our current progress period. Click the drop down, go to variable date, set which, uh, which data it is that you want to use. The same for the other one. But at the end, let's type in plus 2w. And in this case, I'm going to set it to any item that starts within the time slice. I'm just going to give it, quickly give it a name. OK that. And here we can see it's only bringing through this one subtask because that's the only task that starts in that period. Thank you for watching this tutorial video.